So I'm on my way to work and all of a sudden my dash lights up like a Christmas tree. I panic for a second, look over at the access port, nothing seems out of the ordinary. It's all normal. So I get one of the scariest codes you could ever get just because, well, you know, it could be really bad or really simple. Go to read codes and we get P0171, which is system to lean. It's good that the check engine light is on because if it is running lean, it's compensating for it. By the looks of the fuel pressure, I'm running normal fuel pressure. However, this is one of those codes where it's like it could be anything under the sun. It could be, you know, a leak. It could be a boost leak, a vacuum leak. It could be my catch cans. It could be uh, my turbo inlet. It could be my bypass valve. It could be an O2 sensor. So I was really scared at first because I was like, it's gonna be either my high pressure pump or my low pressure pump. One of them's failing. And I lowered my E content because I was at E60 and I lowered it down to 42. I, mean, I thought it was my high pressure pump finally giving out on me. I've been getting a little bit of fuel oscillation with my high pressure pump, anything above like E60. Ironically got fuel oscillation shortly after the check engine light came on. I have since lowered my E content. I haven't had any oscillations and the I cleared the light and it came back. I don't think it's the fuel pumps or it's Ross Creations would say the full pumps. These are the full pumps though in here. These are like, these are the full pumps. No, those are not fuel pumps. Those are SpaghettiOs. I, I don't think it's that. I really do think it's something much more simple, but it's gonna be something that's gonna be a pain in the ass to find. When I get to work today on my lunch break, I think I'm gonna lift the car up, start checking vacuum lines check my turbo inlet because that stuff can crack you know the factory turbo inlet can crack you know the bypass valve can separate from the inlet all kinds of stupid stuff can happen or even one of my catch can hoses being loose or there's actually little dipsticks on my catch can and if those came loose there's a little o-ring that seals them up and if one of those for some reason came loose that'll actually cause a vacuum leak I think one of the most frustrating things about me moving down here is losing my garage. I can't stand living in an apartment complex. I love having my own area. I love having my own garage. Like, I'm having issues with my car and I, I'm trying to rush to get it done on my lunch break. Well guys, thank God that I started here. That's exactly what happened. Look at that. There it is, separated right at the bypass valve. Look at that. <laughs> Time for the Grim Speed one. Well, now I'm in this predicament. Also, I wanted to show you guys, I, it's not perfect, but I wanted to set up a little area to do my podcast. Now I have a little corner in my apartment where I can kind of do this and have a place to talk to you guys, have a place that's comfortable for me and hopefully comfortable for you. Got a nice little setup here. You know, it's all I could ask for. I don't have the money to have a big studio or anything. And it's, let's be real, it's just a guy talking you know so what else do i need back to the turbo inlet situation i do want to address that very soon and i only have a couple of options so the grim speed inlets are on like a four to five week back order right now and i don't want to drive my car around like that with the so literally the bypass valve where it comes into the inlet is literally snapped i'm sure some of you guys have already seen that and it's just it's ridiculous so i don't want to drive the car around like that for too long and I don't wanna wait four to five weeks for a Grim Speed one. So I was looking and TDMI imports or TDMI, TDM imports, however you wanna say it, their logo is like TDM and then like three slashes. I'm sure you guys may have seen their inlets. They're like a, they, they almost have like a vortex generator design inside of the inlet. It's really cool. So it's got like a, it's like a vortex stacker. So it's supposed to help direct airflow better, but yada, 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 and it's billet. The problem with that one is it's super expensive. And the main problem that I'm facing is either route I go, I'm gonna need a tune. It's gonna change your air fuel corrections and you don't want to have any adverse effects from that. So the what I'm forced with now is getting an aftermarket inlet and the only one really available is either the Perrin one, which I don't really have anything against Perrin, but the quality, I don't want a silicone hose as my inlet. And uh, you have to eliminate like the, the boost control solenoid doesn't actually bolt down anymore on the parent one. It like goes in, it's, it's weird. So I don't want to deal with that. What I want to do is get probably the TDMI one and install that. And I'm going to have to get a retune. So now I'm in this predicament where I got to buy a $350 turbo inlet and probably four to $500 to retune the car. I'm not going to get anything out of it. 
So I'm going to be spending all that money to get a retune and get a new part and it's not going to do anything exciting for the car. So I'm also thinking if I'm already going out of my way to do the tune, I've been wanting to get the Nostrum fuel pump because my uh, stock high pressure fuel pump really gets angry if you put more than like 55% ethanol in it. Sometimes even lower, it'll get angry and you'll get fuel oscillations and it's really weird. And that's what I originally thought when my check engine light came on, that that was finally giving up on me. So before that ever becomes an issue, I wanna just kind of get rid of that right now while I still can. So what I wanna do now is get the turbo inlet and get the high pressure fuel pump from Nordstrom. And then what I'm hoping is maybe something else to add a little bit of, a little bit more power to make it worthwhile doing a tune because I just feel stupid getting the car retuned for no reason. I could go out and buy another stock one and put it in the car. And I honestly thought about doing that. But if I do that, what if it breaks again? You know, a stock one's a hundred dollars. You know, I made it 20,000 miles with this. So if I'm going to have to replace them three, four times, everyone's having issues with it breaking. And if it breaks somewhere where it's a little bit more vulnerable, such as where the intake attaches or such as breaks off of the turbo or anything that's a little bit more crucial, that could be really bad. So any air coming in after the MAF has already sensed it is really bad. So I don't want to keep running the car like this. I got to get it fixed ASAP. And that's the fastest and most effective thing I can do is to get that one. So I'm going to probably order that one first thing in the morning and then I'm going to you know, do what I gotta do to get a tune. It's nothing major, you know, it could have been way worse. So I'm glad it is what it is. I was really worried it was something like ridiculous, but I'm glad that I checked that. And for some reason it was the first thing that popped into my mind because I remembered everyone was having issues with the inlets cracking. And long and behold, that's exactly what's wrong with mine. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and hopefully you like my new setup and you know, I'm looking forward to making some cool videos in the future for you guys. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.